सूरज की पहली किरण के साथ दिन की शुरुआत कीजिए सुबह का मंगल प्रभात आपको शुभ हो सुबह सुबह हो खुशियों का मेला न लोगों की परवाह न दुनिया का झमेला पंछियों का संगीत हो और मौसम अलबेला मुबारक हो आपको ये खूबसूरत सवेरा हर सोमवार से लेकर शुक्रवार तक सुबह छह से लेकर नौ बजे तक शामिल रहे रेडियो फिजिटो पर हम सफर में रविंद्र सिंह के साथ Night Old Capital now a World Heritage Site after 25 years of lobbying. Fijians overseas welcome online registrations for next year's elections. And calls for more counsellors for children involved in substance and drug abuse. Welcome to FPC News, I'm Amrita Priya Darshni. First up today, proved double celebrations for Fiji sports. The Jacks Nandi football side created history after beating Ba three goals to one to win the Vodafone Fiji fact after a lapse of 17 years. This is my first win in this uh, in this country for the any tournament for any district, and I feel proud for these boys. And I think what I wanted, they gave it to me, and they deserve to win. And in rugby, our flying Fijians did us proud in Japan to win the Pacific Nations Cup after a bonus point. 34-21 win over Tonga this afternoon. Sporting action will follow in our sports bulletin. The old capital Levuka is now the country's first World Heritage Site. This was decided at the 37th session of the World Heritage Committee meeting currently underway in Cambodia. Epeli Tukuwasa reports. The declaration of Levuka as a World Heritage Site is good news not only to the people of Ovalau but to the country as a whole. And this being the first uh, heritage site uh, in, in Fiji, so it's a fairly important thing because we have similar things that we would like to preserve as heritage in, in, in Fiji. The Attorney General Ayase at Kiyum says the declaration is a tribute to the people of Levuka who have worked hard and lobbied tirelessly for the listing. We are very overwhelmed by it and I think there's a number of opportunities not just for, as the minister said, for Levuka, but overall, but also Lomai Viti, uh, overall. The declaration will surely boost tourism in the country, as Levuka is now listed among other well-known heritage sites around the world. This is a wonderful opportunity for the private sector, the inbound operators, uh, to work together with the uh, National Trust, work together with the, the Ministry of uh, National Heritage, uh, local government and tourism, to ensure that we take full advantage of um, this listing that has been um, uh, provided to us or given to us by UNESCO. The town, an outstanding example of the late 19th century Pacific port settlements, reflects the integration of local building traditions leading to the emergence of a unique landscape. Fiji is among 14 other countries that received the World Heritage Site listing. Epeli Tukuwasa, FBC News. The 29-year-old bus driver who is alleged to have abducted a 16-year-old student from Navua has been charged with one count of abduction. The accused is alleged to have picked the student up from Navua and brought her to an apartment complex in Suva on Friday. Prompt action by SAF's apartment staff in alerting police led to the bus driver's arrest. He will be produced in the Suva Magistrate's Court tomorrow morning. Fijians living overseas are eagerly awaiting their chance to be able to register online for next year's elections. FPC journalist Roland Coroy was in New Caledonia recently and tells us the news of online registrations have been welcomed by Fijians there. Saramaya Kamenieli Seru has been living in New Caledonia for more than 40 years, 
but gets to visit home in Kandavu as often as he can. He's a retired miner who's openly welcomed the government's decision to register Fijians abroad for elections next year. I believe it's very good. It gives Fijians like us who are living overseas a chance to have a say in the elections of our country. It's really good. And he isn't the only one. Andi Saumailangi Vesikula, the VA who came to New Caledonia for work, says she will now encourage all other Fijians in New Caledonia to register once online registration start. I like it very much because this is the first time this opportunity has come, especially for people like us who have been living overseas for a long time. This is the first time and I welcome it very much. Young Fijians in Nomea have also welcomed the move, saying they will now be able to have a say in next year's elections. Oh, for, for the Fijian who lives uh, overseas to, to vote for the election next year, and uh, I think these are good things for every fit. They want to have a say, but you know they know they can't because there's no means of um, participating in those um, sort of stuff like elections. And so I reckon it's a good thing. It's a good thing that people can, uh, Fijians overseas can um, register online and, and have a say and vote because at least you know they, they say that um, they, they voice their opinion and it's a good thing. Electronic voter registration is in its third phase, after which registrations of Fijians living abroad will start. As for Fijians here in New Caledonia, they do miss home, and getting registered to vote makes them feel appreciated, especially as they are miles away from home. Fiji, merci beaucoup, au revoir, tout à l'heure. Roland Koroi, FBC News. Authorities are investigating the death of a miner in an underground incident at the Vatikola gold mine on Friday. The company says they are focusing on getting a full and thorough investigation on the circumstances surrounding the man's death. They refuse to reveal any further information. Police spokesperson Anna Naisora says they can only confirm that an investigation into the incident is underway. Vatikola Gold Mines Limited General Manager David Whittle says they will be doing everything they can to ease the miners' family suffering at this difficult time. There are not enough specialized counselors in the country to deal with students involved in drug and substance abuse. The National Substance Abuse Advisory Council has been advocating against drug abuse for many years and say with the limited resources available, they seek constant help from the government and other donor agencies. Vitika Pratap reports. The increase in new trend of drug and substance abuse has the National Substance Advisory Council worried as children as young as 10 are now getting involved. In class 7 and 8 we have got record cases and the youngest one that we have uh, received report on is about 10 years old. Uh, I remember interviewing um, a child who came to the office here with the grandparents. She was in class 3. Ms. Saleh Jimbalavu says with these kind of emerging cases, they need specialized counselors to deal with children. Uh, counseling is an issue that, uh, that will need to be addressed in the future. But we appreciate the work that other uh, CSOs are doing out there. Yeah. For example, Empower Pacific is an organization that provides counseling services. Ministry of Health has got uh, their counselors, but definitely the, they will be needed to, to strengthen that particular area. The Education Ministry has established four councillor positions in Fiji's four major education centres and the council officials believe they need to work hand in hand to combat this issue. We will continue to make submissions to government and we are going to continue to ask for assistance from donor agencies for support in the particular programme because we know that drug and substance abuse is interlinked with other social ills in society. From Monday, all schools around the country will celebrate International Day against drug abuse and illicit trafficking. The theme for this year's celebration is Keep Me Safe from Abuse to Shine the Best. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. In the news ahead, Dalo Nursery set up to meet local and overseas demand. How would you like to spend your morning?
You could spend your morning like this. Or you could spend it like this. Tune in to the morning ride every weekday morning from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. right here on Today FM Today's Hit Music. Isambulu binaka. Pedango wadi sori ndalai. Na makiru mani wasi ningono porota kina lali nekabi. Maina tolu kina bitu. Ena moni tingina poro rumbuka. Ena mbula FM. Na bandu ena serre. Welcome back to FPC News. The prevalence of non-communicable diseases is as high in rural areas as it is in urban settings. As Apeli Tukuwasa finds out, urbanization creeping into village life is taking a toll on people's health. Villages have an abundance of healthy food choices, vegetables, root crops, livestock and fish. Despite this, NCDs are at an all-time high. Uh, what we're finding now is there's not much difference in urban and rural, simply because uh, urbanization has uh, reached the rural areas. Dr. Tukana says people in the rural areas are uninterested in growing their own food or catching fish for the dinner table. Instead, processed food is taking over. Increasing number of people living in the rural are eating from supermarkets and their, and their farms. So even that uh, rural urban differences is going away now. Fighting NCDs is all about making the right choices. We are so blessed with food and everything uh, compared to other countries. It's your decision making. How much I should eat? When should I stop? Uh, when should I sleep? How much money should I? So those decision makings is very important to, to keep, your, keep your life healthy. According to health experts, the church and the Bonoas should be involved in the fight against NCDs because their word carries a lot of weight. Epeli Tukwasa, FBC News. Fiji's inability to meet the demand for Dalo for local and overseas markets has prompted the Agriculture Ministry to set up Dalo nurseries. The lack of planting materials has led to the drop in Dalo production, hence we are not meeting the demand. Epeli Tukuasa reports. There is a major shortage of Dalo in the country and we are even struggling to cater for our overseas markets. The main Dalo variety we are exporting is Tausala. When at this point in time, Tausala is again short in the market. We are running short of about 100 tons every week for, for, to, to meet the Australian and the New Zealand market for Tausala alone. Getting China as our newest market will surely add more pressure to farmers and suppliers. We had to reprioritize some of the prog existing programs that we have because of this market. It is a 6,000 ton market that exists for Chambeni and for Urnivonu. The Ministry of Agriculture is now setting up nurseries for the multiplication of Ndalo planting material. Uh, our Cornivia research station has been, had been tasked to come up with, uh, the, to develop nurseries. Once that is developed, then the, we will disaka, then we will distribute that to farmers for rapid multiplication. Farmers are urged to work very hard and exporters need to be consistent with their supply so Fiji does not lose its dollar bias. Epeli Tuguasa, FBC News. Police cannot fight crime alone. That's the message from the Minister for Defence, Chokatani Dokanasinga, at the closing of the Duavata Northern Crime Prevention Carnival in Lambasa last night. Eleanor Turangai View has more. The last day of the carnival did not disappoint. From the colourful floats to the lively entertainment. <laughs> Hundreds joined the contestants in a march through Lambasa town. The carnival has been labelled a resounding success, bringing people from all walks of life together in a bid to help raise awareness on having a crime-free community. Crime prevention leads to reduction of crime. But what is also important, crime prevention and reducing crime creates a sense of safety and security, a sense of belonging, a sense of trust and confidence. The Defence Minister also appealed to the public to continue to help authorities fight crime. The police force, your police, cannot fight crime alone as the burden of policing nowadays is far more demanding and complex and the Fiji police force must therefore look to the community for help. We seek the help of the community. The week-long carnival culminated in the crowning last night 
Miss Tavioni Anarieta Tukana took out two titles, Miss Personality and Miss Duovata Northern Crime Prevention. She had a word of advice for those in attendance. I'd like to quote a very famous saying from the former President of the United States of America, JFK Kennedy, and he says, Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Miss Sanganga Laisani Tonga took out the Miss Charity title, while Mr. Banana Leaf Restaurant Libaisi Rasomai was crowned king. Eleanor Turangayu, FBC News. Ahead in sports, Nandi wins Fiji Fact after 17 years. Namaste, dosto. Mitchi Raftan se Maya Shnil Singh. Shamil ho jaiye hamare saath Monday to Friday from 3 to 7 p.m. Nimbula, me thangu nimi lote na isoro tumboa. Nama kia umina rua kina ona na vya kavi muni te kina vaka rambuka. Rongo mena vya sama kina vya baka baro ta kini ndreko malolo. Eno rini ufiji wana na wongani vya niano. Ngai nama kia kina. It's been 17 years but there's no time like the present for the Jacks Nandi football team who defeated Ba 3-1 to win this year's Vodafone Fiji Fact. Informed player Rusiate Matererenga found the net twice for the home side following a double blunder from Ba. In comes Rusiate Matererenga and Rusiate Matererenga has given them the second goal. The mistake again, Ralulu coming out. But it was Malakai Rakula's goal that raised the din of the Nandi crowd for managing the historic win. Nandi first won the fact in 1996, making this their second time to rest their hands on the coveted silverware. Yes, I think nobody, nobody believed, even the fans of Nandi did not believe it, but I have always believed in my players. After the loss, I told the players that I still believe in you, you can win this tournament, and they did it. Yeah, and your star, your star in the making. You were upset with him a bit earlier on when we spoke to you last week, Gase, Rusi, but Rusi here, definitely the hero. Yeah, of course, yes, he played his heart out, he played for his uh, district, he played from the heart, I think everybody played from their heart and that's why today they won, it's not only Rusiate, it's the 11 players, it's the 22 players who have made the Nandi proud. Ma's lone goal came from Avinesh Swami, definitely big celebrations in the Jet Set Town tonight and the rest of the week. The Flying Fijians have won the Pacific Nations Cup after a superb 34-21 bonus point win over Tonga at Prince Chichibu Memorial Stadium in Tokyo, Japan this afternoon. Tonga had an early 8-0 lead but not for long after Fijian winger Sireli Mbombo and Napoleone Nalanga opened the floodgates for the Flying Fijians. Nalanga scored a double while blistering runs from Mbombo and Fijian centre Nemani Nandolo proved too strong for Tonga. Seremaya Mbai continued his perfect kicking form to convert all four tries and add two penalty goals. The win handed Fiji the much-needed three points to deny Canada the win this year. Taking it one game at a time worked out as the perfect game plan for Nasinu today. They defeated Tailevuneta Siri 2-1 to win the Vodafone Fiji Fact Premier Division at Prince Charles Park in Nandi. But while they've won the title, the focus now is to beat Northern Division winners Taviuni in order to get promoted to next season's Super Premier grade. Elena McDonald reports. Scoring the first goal of the match set the tone for Nasinu, which never looked back in the Premier grade decider today. Still unbeaten this season, including this weekend's win, is a good reason to celebrate upon their return to Suva. <laughs> While they enjoy their winning streak, it won't be for long with a more important match to prepare for shortly.
knowing a lot of opportunities were missed today and defensive holes to fix, Nasinu won't be resting on their laurels come the promotion relegation matches against Taviuni. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. After losing in the semi-final stage yesterday, Suva continued to spiral in this year's Vodafone Fiji Fact. This afternoon, they suffered at the hands of Rewa in the third-place playoff, losing four goals to nil. What seemed to be an exciting start for the capital side last week entering the tournament as defending champions ended with a fourth-place finish today and back to the drawing board for coach Gurjeet Singh. A week-long tour by professional table tennis champion Kim Gilbert to Fiji has become the best thing that's ever happened to the sport. After carrying out clinics around the country, officials now have a huge following from the western and coastal divisions. And at this rate, Fiji table tennis can expect bigger things to come in the not-too-distant future. Elena McDonald reports. A visit from Kim Gilbert has paid off for one of Fiji's minor sports that's brimming with potential. It was a good opportunity to promote Fiji table tennis back to the people in Hollywood and also as Fiji has a very good sports and table tennis destination for them. Although here for a short while, her countrywide trip proved an unforgettable experience. Also on the way down during that week, uh, we had two one wonderful picture shoots. One was with Kim on a table tennis table, doing her surfing in Tavarua. And the other one was holding a table tennis record and playing table tennis on a horse. One group, though, benefited the most from her visit. The Fiji under-15 and under-18 teams preparing for their trip to New Caledonia. Young Jun Park in the boys, who's 14, is currently our number one in the under-15, number one in the under-18. And Sally Yi, who's only 12, uh, she's in the, actually still what they call a hopes candidate, which is the under-12 grade. And she's also the number one in the under-15 and the number one in the under-18 as well in the girls. Majority of the national squad are surprisingly from Ba, which has fast become a talent base for table tennis in Fiji. Their national reps are becoming younger and younger, which is a good sign for a sport that expects to host a number of events next year. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. It was brilliant weather in the west of Fiji today, which may have contributed to the brilliant performance by the Jet Nadi side, with the exception of Suva and Savusabu, who had some cloudy periods and brief showers, all other centres experienced fine weather. Namasa leads the temperature table today with 32 degrees, followed by Nandi and Lotoka on 29 degrees. No records were available for Nandi. And celebrations can continue tomorrow in the jet set town of Nandi as the weather office predicts fine weather to continue tomorrow. Unfortunately for Suva and Savu Savu, you can expect some showers. And looking to midweek, fine apart from brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, it should be cool at night. That was your news for tonight, but before we go, the headlines again. Old Capital, now a World Heritage Site after 25 years of lobbying. Fijians overseas welcome online registrations for next year's elections. And celebration time for sporting fans. Fiji wins Pacific Nations Cup after beating Tonga 34-22 today. And Nandi wins the Fiji Pact after 17 years. Remember, you can catch the replay of Nandi's win tonight at 10.15 only on FBC TV. To the poll question now, and we ask... Does Fiji football need new and young leadership? Visit our FPC website www.fpc.com.fj to take part. Remember, you can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's all from the newsroom tonight. Good evening. Bula, I'm Wame. Join me every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on The Center Show with classic hits from the 70s as well as the 80s right here on Gold FM. Jaha ho pyaar ka basera aur rishto ki khushbu wo hai aapka apna ghar sansar. Join me on Ghar Sansar Monday to Friday 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. only on Radio Fiji 2.